scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skull will shock your soul, seal your doom tonight. Spooky scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skull will shock your soul, seal your doom tonight. If you clicked on this video and you think it's clickbait, uh, sadly fam, you're wrong. It's not clickbait. This right here is the Pumpkin PC 9000. Nah, I don't know. It's the Pumpkin PC. And it's a fully working computer inside of a pumpkin. And to answer the second question, yes, I'm still in my pajamas. I've been working on this all day long. I'm super happy with how this turned out. It works perfectly. And uh, I think I've just descended to the pumpkin master race. So you're probably wondering, well, how do we do it? Well, you watch this video, we'll go through and explain each part. But to mostly sum it up, a regular sized motherboard wouldn't have fit in this small of a pumpkin. The other issue is power supply, graphics card, and a lot of different things are really difficult to fit into a said, co said computer. Um, especially because the pumpkin, let alone, you only get about this much space total width. Which, obviously, if you have a micro ATX motherboard, it might fit. But the other issue came into the fact that cost. A lot of, in order to be practical with, you know, making a pumpkin PC and having it, you know, do the tasks without being insanely expensive, especially because if you want to build a P PC, you, the funny thing was most of the components actually ended up costing less than the actual pumpkin, which is kind of funny. Um, but I think that the biggest thing for me is the fact that I, you know, was going through and I'm like, hey, uh, if I want to get a power supply, power supply is going to be big. It's not going to necessarily fit in there. If you put a motherboard in there, that's going to be big too, and that's going to be a lot of difficulty as well. If you put like uh, start getting the graphics card in there and stuff, it just it started becoming an issue that the pumpkin was way too small in order to fit it. Now, obviously, I was thinking there, going, well, what would be the other option? And so I grabbed some of the Raspberry Pis that I have, and before you all get like, oh well, Raspberry Pi is just one solid chip. Yeah, I know that, and I mean. The reason why I chose it was not because I really would have preferred to build my own computer, but simply because size and price is just a big restraint. Obviously, it would be nice if I was some said big YouTuber to go through and just go choose, you know, whatever parts I wanted. But for the purpose of this video, this is actually a pretty cheap chip, and I actually have two of them, which I might end up installing and rigging them together to even get more processing power out of it. But the thing about these is they're really small and durable. So what I've got here is I've actually got a regular Raspberry Pi out and I've put, a, put it in a case, the one in here in the case, and added a bunch of stuff. And I also bring out hard drives and left a lot of room open. And the best part is it's even got a wireless keyboard that I was able to find and get working as well. So let's talk about what we got on the Raspberry Pi though, what like system stuff we got on there. So it was a first, I think this is a first or second generation Raspberry Pi. Um, I think the processor is up to one gigahertz. And it's a single core one gigahertz processor. And I understand it probably could one run Windows 10, uh, I think the Windows 10 system requirements is something like um, one gigahertz uh, processor. But I think if you were to get able to get the newest version, you would probably be able to run Windows on this, a fully working Windows. But if you curious what I have back on here, I actually have uh, Linux running on this, uh, the Raspberry Pi currently. But that's what we did in order to put this computer together. So basically, the biggest issue as well when designing this is figuring out exactly how I wanted to get the cables run to. Uh, I really wasn't planning on having the, I forgot about the, the HDMI cable, so that's kind of sticking out the front. But I do have like a power um, cable, power cable kind of going in the side as well. And I might go through and add a slit for the um, HDMI cable later on. But that's basically what I have right now. Now obviously, the Raspberry Pi is in a very nice case. Uh, I was able to find some, one of the old kits that I had. It comes with a speaker on top, which means that this actually can play sound too. So, in a moment, I'm going to see if I can get spooky, spooky skeletons blasted out of this pumpkin, which will definitely be something interesting to find out, because I think a speaker, a custom MP3 kind of speaker pumpkin sounds pretty dank to me. Obviously, this video is supposed to be a PC, but I mean, come on, you got to get some spooky, spooky skeletons. And, uh... If you guys are curious what I do with all the insides of the pumpkin, because I'll be doing some time lapses and stuff with me taking it apart, I have, I love eating pumpkin seeds. I'm not a big fan of pumpkin spice. Uh, that's just, uh, uh, I'm just going to say it's a culture that's not me. Um, but I am a big fan of pumpkin seeds. I like pumpkin seeds. They're good. Uh, so I have them making an oven right now. But pumpkin, let's get into it. Let's see you guys what we did, and I'll see you guys in a couple seconds. So I've officially gone through and found everything that we're going to be needing, pretty much. 
Now, give or take, there'll be a d couple different things that we may or may not need. And the other thing is, let me go through and say something. The ra One of my Raspberry Pis, I have two of them, actually. Um, I, As I said, being a tech nerd, a long time ago, I really wanted them, so I saved up enough money. They're not that expensive, at least at the time, and got two of them. One of them came in a kit. Uh, I, I, that's why I'm, there's a lot of the stuff that I'm using for night kit, simply because it's really good for the... Um, or it's really like the color theme works really well and stuff. So that's why I'm using it. I think it's a non-profit and stuff, so I think it's called Camo. So actually, I will shout them out if you want to go check that out. Um, but it's that's why we're going to be using some of this stuff. Um, I've also got two different SD chips. Um, one is obviously that that branded one from that kit, and then the other one is just a regular SD chip. They're both eight gigabytes. Uh, I believe actually one is a micro SD. Yeah, one is a micro SD. So basically, there these are going to be where we put the operating system on. Um, nothing else larger than that. Um, just pretty much the plain Ubuntu operating system. Not Ubuntu, but Linux operating system. And then we'll just put that down there as well. Um, the other thing is we're going to need some power. Now, the thing about um, Raspberry Pis is they use a micro USB power. Um, so you pretty much you can take anything from like an Android phone and plug it in and get it working. So the best thing about this is this actually has a good bit of range to plug in. So we're going to go through and just get this like it's basically like the power so you can have a good bit that the pump can be away from an outlet which will be good for what we're doing today next thing I have I will not argue with you in this situation but this is by far one of the superior advancements of having a kit is simply because some of the stuff they offer is just superior to anything you'll have in a household and this is one of these examples is that this is a speaker case which obviously a Raspberry Pi has no speakers whatsoever and this does a much better job than plugging in some speakers, uh, at least being in the same relative area. And the sound quality is actually kind of good. So that's what we're going to be using. We're going to be putting it in this case and then mounting it inside of the thing. Obviously, it has, does have a, I think it has mounting spots and stuff. But the case is just far superior. And so we're going to put that in the side of the pumpkin. And, of course, getting the output um, carved out in the back. And we're going to go through and do that as well. And of course you have need some output, and I've got an HDMI cable, I think this is also from the kit. Some of these, I have a lot of HDMI cables, and I don't know where this is from, but we've got a good bit of range for what we can use inside for the pumpkin. And then finally, I've got, as I said, one of those, another examples of good use of the kit is pretty much this pumpkin, or I say orange looking uh, keyboard that's kind of got a mouse pad already built into it. And that's why I've liked it so much, is because it has the option to be um, wireless, and it's also got the option to be um, Bluetooth or uh, wired, which I thought was really nice. Obviously, you won't get much distance out of it, so like you only let's see how long this cable is. You only get a little bit of distance out of it. Think about it this way: if you're plugged into the computer and you've got this set up uh, in the back, then I mean it looks pretty good. Let me also do a real quick um, check on everything, make sure I have enough um, spots and stuff. So yeah, it looks like it's good. So this is pretty much the whole. Um, that's pretty much the whole build. Um, give or take internet, I'll have to see what I can do about that. So I can find an adapter and such. But let's get into it. So now I've got everything, let's get started. So one of the simplest things about Raspberry Pis actually is that, let me see if I can adjust this real quick. Forgive me about there. There we go. Right, so this is the Raspberry Pi. Now I have to think it's like a Model B or something if I'm correct. But as I said, it only comes with two USB ports, at least in this model. I don't know if it does anywhere else. But this is pretty much what you're looking at right there. So let's see if we can go into this real quick. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to... Spooky scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skulls will shock your soul and seal your doom tonight. Spooky scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skulls will shock your soul and seal your doom tonight. Spooky scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Hey, 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 
So I present to you the pumpkin PC 9000. That's right. We got a pumpkin in there. That's the Raspberry Pi. I actually put in, ended up putting it in a Ziploc bag just to make sure that nothing would get shorted out because I was really afraid that was going to happen. It was actually inside of a Ziploc bag, but I think everything will work fine. Speaker and stuff, I checked all work. It's actually pretty cool. You can kind of get a good view of it. it. Looks like there's something, you know, it actually looks like there's, you know, some computer components in there. Looks pretty good. Got some different colors. Um, the best thing is, I do have a light back here. This is actually like a uh, LED light, so I can turn this on, and this will do some really cool lighting if I really wanted to get in there and do it. But I like, I just like the cool look of the computer components inside. It makes it kind of look like what it's supposed to, I guess. And I tried to do some USB things in there as well. So let's get over here. So when you open the sucker up, uh, you've got, as I said, the default Raspberry Pi inside the Ziploc bag, which was obviously not too crazy in that situation. But the big thing was this, this cable that goes in. I kind of made like a power spot and kind of put it in there. And of course I didn't have a, forgot about the HDMI cable. So that's got running or runs in there as well. But inside the Raspberry Pi pretty much just has, you know, has a Ziploc bag that has both the cords running at one spot just to make sure it doesn't short out. It actually works fine. Um, the processor doesn't really need to have a lot of heat dispersion. So it's actually pretty good. Um, so yeah, there you go. So that's the pumpkin PC. And then for the operating system, I have it rigged up over here. And the big thing about it is the wireless keyboard right here actually ends up working really well. So let me make sure this is on first. So I can basically navigate really well with this. I like it a lot, to be honest. It's just, it's really nice. And I mean, you can obviously see the Raspberry Pi set up over there as well. I mean, this is running um, a Linux, I believe. I think it's Raspberry or Noobs, I believe. I don't even remember. Um, but you watch the video, we'll see. So I appreciate everybody uh, for watching and let's get to the wrap up and conclusion. So now we gotta kinda say that we gotta wrap up. And obviously this was, as I said, a very, very fun episode to record. I've gotta say, like out of the most fun I've had in a long time. It does take a long time to record and a lot, a lot of effort. So if you did enjoy this video, then give it a thumbs up so I know to do more of this. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might make a Christmas tree PC, but we'll see what we do from there. The other thing I'm going to ask is, I know a lot of you guys are sitting here, if you watch this far, I really do appreciate it. Um, I want to eventually get to the point where I can actually make a fully like buildable PC inside of a pumpkin next year. And that's my goal is to have enough followers, enough ad revenue to do that. Now obviously that's a, you know, a tough spot to walk on because ad revenue everybody always thinks, oh you're in it for the money. And I'm going to be dead up honest with you, I don't really care about money, I just want to be able to have enough resources and money so I can go through and do projects like this without having a really constraint like I kind of did for this video. Now obviously I don't want to be rich I just want to have enough as I said to do what I like and if you guys share this video pass it around show it to all your friends you know post it on your social media and stuff I really would appreciate it it would help me get there so when we get here next year I think I'd be able to go through and use a you know different parts and get them all set up so we can get a fully working buildable PC inside the pumpkin next time and maybe get a bigger pumpkin because this whole project all together ended up costing me around 50 bucks so obviously I'm not gonna make that off off of this video it was more something fun for me but this is my point of reference is you know I'm not really as I said doing it to get rich or something like that I'm doing it to have fun and obviously no matter this this video in order to get that it needs something like 50,000 views just to make even with what I pay for all the stuff and I'm not saying that to make you guys feel bad I'm saying that because I want you guys to know that like I like to care and invest stuff into my channel I mean if people watch it I really do appreciate it and you know I really do appreciate it like as well so if you did enjoy check out my channel for other stuff and we'll be hopefully getting into some insane content soon and uh, I will see you guys later <laughs> I've got a lot of videos to record for this week, but um, I appreciate it, and I uh, will see you guys later.